This art project is inspired by two Dada artists, Hannah Hawk, known for photo montage, and Kurt Schwitters, who is known for his uh, so-called Mertz collages, M-E-R-Z. Both of these artists were working in the aftermath of World War I, and both were using their art to respond to this moment in time. Both of these artists were also, um, as it so happens, labeled as degenerate artists by the Nazi party in the 1930s when Hitler rose to power. So your assignment and the whole purpose of this project is to channel the early avant-garde, to take a break and make some art, and also to find aesthetic value in things that you would normally discard. A big part of early avant-garde art was um, making art from unexpected materials. So Hannah Hawk's work can be seen on the left and her work was very political. She was very critical of those in positions of political power. Uh, the work of Kurt Schwitters was more about personal ephemera and taking things that normally would be discarded, things that he found, things that he collected, and purposefully turning them into art. So I've got a visual example here that I'd like to show you that's inspired by Kurt Schwitters. So your first, uh, your first task is to decide which one of these artists visually appeals to you more, uh, learn a little bit about them, and then make a collage or photo montage in that style. Um, and of course, you're welcome to combine their two aesthetics. I'm going with Kurt Schwitters because um, I, I have a pile of materials that I collected that I was going to throw away or things I did throw away that I pulled back out. And I'm gonna show you how we'll elevate them to a work of art. I was also pretty inspired by this quote that uh, Kurt Schwitters said, and this is a quote from the Museum of Modern Art. Um, he said that he was trying to find connections between everything. Um, and in reference to World War I, he said that everything had broken down in any case and new things had to be made out of the fragments. And that's exactly what he did with his art. He took fragments and he pieced back together the broken pieces. All right, so here we have my visual example. So I'm making a work of art inspired by Kurt Schwitter's Mertz collages. And I spent 10 minutes um, looking around the house, looking in the bottom of my bag, in my wallet, in the pantry, um, peeling labels off of things, pulling um, you know, wrappers and papers out of the garbage. Essentially, all of these bits of material on their own they're nothing. These, this isn't yet art. This is just the refuse of my daily life. But for the project, you will turn those things into a work of art. What Kurt Schwitters did is the same thing that Hannah Hawk did. He took these little pieces that would normally be overlooked and he put them together in a new way, very avant-garde. It also differs from the collage created according to the laws of chance 
because you're not just dropping things on the surface at random. You are choosing where these bits are going to go, like where they're going to exist on your paper. Kurt Schwitter's included a lot of um, food labels, uh, notes, even little bits of photos and things that he collected. Lots of mail shows up in his artwork. Here I've got my grocery list with a little scribble from my daughter. Um, and I'm going to use part of uh, the junk mail that came to my house. And I like this little window. So I'm going to take advantage of the layering here. So as you are figuring out where these pieces are going to go, you might just play around with a few different arrangements, right? Where, where should they go on the page? Okay, move things around like the pieces of a puzzle before you actually commit to gluing them down. And think about how things are going to overlap, right? Because you can create some visual unity through overlap. And once you've got things where you think you want them, then go ahead and start gluing them down. What I like to do, I'll glue down like the edges that I know are going to go along the edge, but I'll leave little flaps open so I can slide pieces underneath. And once I've got things situated, I'll come back with my glue stick and then finish gluing down the surface. Okay, so it's about action and reaction. Taking these little bits, putting them together in a new way, and uh, creating a work of art from something that you would normally um, not give a second look. That's avant-garde. So what you're doing with this project, at least if you're channeling the work of Kurt Schwitters, is that you are making sense of things that maybe don't make sense. You are giving purpose to your visual resources, to these little artifacts of your daily life. Um, by purposefully arranging your items, you're, you're giving them a new life and a new purpose. Um, this work, might not be quote unquote finished when you glue that last piece down. And if you're looking at your art and you're thinking, man, it, it still needs something, then go ahead and find that something and keep adding to it. One thing I do notice about Kurt Schwitter's work is that he's got lots of layers. So I'm layering things. I've got some parchment paper from the kitchen that right now it looks purple because that's the color of my glue stick, but it's going to create this transparent veil. Um, so there's a little bit more dimension to my collage. Right, and then you'll just keep going with your images until you feel like it's done, right? And it's kind of hard to to say when that will happen, but I think you'll be able to visually recognize when it's done. Um, and that is your project. So I hope that you have fun with it, that you find some inspiration in the things that are around you. And whether you choose to look at the work of Kurt Schwitters, Hannah Hawk, or a little bit of both, Remember, the purpose of this project is for you to get into the mindset of an avant-garde artist, right? To see the value in things that we wouldn't normally consider to be works of art. And by incorporating these things into your art, you're elevating them as an artistic material, right? All right, so when you're done, you will photograph this 
And remember, your photograph is my only visual record. It's the only way I can assess your work. So make sure that you take it from above. And if you're taking it from above, make sure you're not casting a shadow over the image. Sometimes it helps to tape it to a wall and take a picture or do it in natural light. Um, natural light yields the best image. Um, you'll write a few sentences about, you know, what aesthetic you were inspired by, and then what this experience was like for you.